blocked from accessing all services in the next few hours. Communications Minister Esther Wusuakufo is so far standing by her declaration last month that there shall this time be no more extensions. Upon consultation with the industry and in view of the challenges enumerated above, I have very reluctantly decided to grant a final conditional extension. The program, will, and I'm choosing my words carefully, the program will be extended to 30th September to end on the anniversary of its commencement. That will give us one full year of SIM registration. It will be reviewed at the end of this month. And any SIM that has not been fully registered by the end of August will be barred from receiving certain services, including voice and data services. Well, already, as you may well know, some SIMs have already had partially their services uh, blocked. They've been restricted. Uh, but in the next few hours, the entire service that you are open to, if you have a SIM card duly registered, you will no longer have access to that. In essence, your, your SIM card will be completely useless. Well, there is anger tonight, especially from many Ghanaians who say, uh, through no fault of theirs, the National Identification Authority has failed to issue them their Ghana cards, which is the primary and only document for re-registering their SIMs. In fact, the NIA themselves had recently declared they simply could not register and issue all cards before the deadline in a few hours. This is Professor Tefa who heads the authority. Would I advise NCA to extend its deadline? Here's our take. We have a mandate to register all Ghanaians in Ghana and all Ghanaians abroad. There is no way NIA can register all Ghanaians in Ghana. If you look at our performance record, as telling as we believe our performance is, the reality is that there is approximately some 2 million people aged between 15, from 15 years and above, who have not registered for the Ghana card. Today is the 16th of September. There is no way, Jose, that NIA can register those people. It is physically, and technically, fiscally impossible. What advice flows from that? We had said way back in March that it was impossible. And I've said that it is like expecting a maiden to make a baby every three months. So that's not how the law designed NIA. That is not how the fiscal and logistical system has been designed to respond. We cannot do that. Now, every institution is driven by its own laws. It is not for NIA to as it were, um, prefer advice on that which falls outside its mandate. That is the Professor Tiffa who heads the NIA there, uh, obviously laying out what they can and cannot do. And as you can imagine tonight, uh, those who fall in that category, uh, they have duly registered, but the NIA has failed to issue them their Ghana cards or they have been trying to register, but have not managed to do so either the nia offices are overwhelmed or they have the cards already but hasn't been validated or stuck tonight with you know degree of anger i want to bring in my colleague papani who has been around today uh gauging the mood and papani from what i'm i understand the queues are pretty long but there is a lot of tension and anxiety Yes, uh, particularly with the arrangement. Uh, usually when you go there, you have to sit in a particular arrangement so that, and it follows from who came earlier and then who came last. But just w w once in a while, you get people um, getting up. There's a lady who told me that sh she's been out of the queue three times. Uh, she got to the front. She was asked to go to the main head office. She went, she was referred back to the place. So when she comes back every time, she has to fight to get to the attendance as soon as possible because she's already been there. But the rest of the people that would not understand so definitely the tension um is growing every time you go then people are shouting on top of their voices and uh, for some of the people who realize that it's almost getting to the closing time they definitely don't have patience for the network is down and that seems to be a chorus that is being sung at every single oh, center so the nest that network is also down yes yeah, so, some uh, places uh, yeah, most of most of the places you go you hear the network is down so you can I, there was one part where i had to sit for close to 30 minutes and 30 minutes not a single person was registered. registered 
So if oh, you have so, to, so this, so uh, is it uh, the fault of the uh, telecom company in question? You know, because they are they are registering their customers. So it, it will be the platform of, of the, the platform that they yes, will be the sync, platform okay. that they are using to, to do this. Even though they do not speak to us officially, um, from from what you gather from the ground, it's a matter of so the, the, the person who is doing the registration is sitting and cannot do any work. So clearly, it has to be the platform that they are using uh, to do the registration process. So it, it becomes difficult that someone tells you that he's they've been there for uh, since nine a.m. and it's three p three p.m. What well past three p.m. when I got there? And they are still in the queue. And this is, they're not even in front of the queue to even say that when, when the network comes, I don't go to register. That's a gentleman who tells me um, he's due to travel tonight. And that is why he came to the country. We can listen to some of them. And seriously, uh, I'm among the first people who registered. For over two years now, my card is not being validated. I've been going up and down. When you go to this office, they say, go here, go there. And right now, you've blocked me from getting access. Why? Why should that happen? Why should that happen? The foundation is not good. The foundation of Ghana card is not good. It's not that Two years now, my brother. I've been going up and down just to get my card validated for two years. And all I, to my surprise, this morning, my, my, my number has been blocked. For what reason? I'll leave a cry here to Elwak each and every blessed day. Why? Is he paying me my transportation to that place? It's not everybody that is aware of it. So you need to educate us so that everybody will know that there's, it's not everybody that knows it. So definitely you have to educate us. But you don't come and stand here and then be throwing your, your hands about. Knowing already that this percentage of people haven't uh, registered, completed their registration, you should be ready for this kind of, uh, 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 how should I say, uh, 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 wait from, from, from the public. So when you come here and they tell you that the system is down, I mean, so are they going to extend their closing, their working hours, or they are going to close exactly at the time they usually close? All these things is going to go against the customers. So I think they should have made plans for this. Um, frustration uh, there uh, at the center uh, that you visit, Papani. Uh, so some of these individuals, I mean, those these individuals I've just had there, they don't have the Ghana card. They've been trying to get a Ghana card, no fault of theirs. But there's another group of people who have just been accused for long. Uh, who have also been today rushing to try and meet the deadline. Yes, um, Evan. So uh, for some people, it, it, it's, it's, it's a fight between leaving what, what feeds you every day and coming to be in a queue. Some of them today have sacrificed, knowing that tomorrow is the deadline. But this is what you have to be faced with. You have to sit there for hours. And you're not even the first person in the queue. So you have to wait for a very long time. And eventually when somebody gets, that's between... Uh, 30 minutes to one hour. That's when only one person gets registered. We are talking about 50 to 100 people in just a single queue at a single center. And most of the centers have the same situation. Uh, I just saw even pockets of people who uh, still have their SIM cards blocked, even though we, are, we understood that some of them, they had reversed that particular decision. But some of them still had that channel. You can listen to them. You can't make a call, but I can receive a call. And if you come here, sometimes they will tell you that the network is gone. And you'll be here, people will be entering and they'll be doing it and be going. They have, they have done it, but they have blocked it. I can't even get access to inside for past three days. So today I've jock up very, very well. Today is my last day. If they can't do it for me, I'll just change my SIM and throw the other SIM away. Now we are here. We are stranded. You can, you can see. So yesterday I came here and they said the network is slow. So I went home and came this morning. And that is the only number I'm using to do my business. But I thought here would be easier for me because yesterday the network was bad there. So I thought here would be okay for me. And here is the case. The crowd is too much. I've been here around 11. Well, they were, they were saying uh, there's network problem. They said network problem. Well, for, more, uh, for me, I actually traveled down because of that. I'm not in the country. That is the reason why I came. And I have to make, I have to, I have to make sure that I've got it right before returning back. So I'm waiting right after here. If I get it, I have to return back. Well, we are here. We are watching. Uh, they, have, they have some challenges with the network. Yeah. My worry is I have to travel outside this country this evening. And I came because of this. So if they close and it's actually that they are closing the day tomorrow, then I, have, I, I think I've lost my number. That, that is what I'm, I'm praying that I should be able to have my SIM registered before I leave. You know, some of us, we are not in the country. We have to travel because of this. And today is the last day. I'm here since morning. Yeah, I'm also working there, you see. 
asking permission or sort of, you know outside is not like our own country. I was here right from, uh, I think, uh, let me see, 9.30 to 10 or about. It's very frustrating because um, looking at, okay, looking at the way the queue is moving, I think uh, the, the office is having some challenges. I think uh, doing that will create uh, a very big problem, and these are artificial problems. We can correct them. We made the law as humans. We can as well correct the law. You understand? Why are we stress Why are we stressing ourselves? 30th, if you don't register, you know. And most of us, you know, Ghanaians, hand to mouth. If you don't go, you not eat. And those of us who are here today consider us that today we are not feeding home. Of course. Time is money. If you don't go, you don't eat. So that is the challenges we are facing. So if she really thinks about us, the Ghanaians, and she knows she's there because of us, she should think about us first, not the problem. The problem should not be a priority than us. Mm. So that's the situation in Accra. Uh, what about Kumasi tonight? Um, let's bring in my colleague, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, what did you find when you went around? Well, Evans, I visited some service centers in Kumasi, and for every center I visited, there were quite long queues. So I managed to speak to some customers and asked why they waited a day before the deadline before before they are coming in their numbers to register. And some said their registration process wasn't complete. And others also mentioned that there were network issues. So they were told by the telco staff to come some other time. And, well, some gave up completely and turned up today, a day before the deadline, with the hope of getting registered. But they, they have been in queues for about six hours. And that's frustrating them the more because you wouldn't find the queues moving. And they spoke to some staff who have refused to communicate anything to them. And I tried to make some inquiries, but, well, I was turned down too. So that's the situation in Kumasi. I, I see. Uh, thank you, Mona Lisa. Uh, there are many of you who are uh, in queues tonight. Uh, if indeed the uh, centers have not closed already. And you haven't read it. So I want to hear from you uh, what is happening and what your anticipation is uh, tomorrow. What do you fear the most? Losing your sim, your sim's ability. I want to bring in um, Salom Brantia. You know where the money, uh, the, they've been gathering signatures uh, all this while. Now the deadline is upon us. Sam George is the deputy ranking on the communications committee, joins us on Zoom. Mr. George, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Thank you very much, Evan. It's a very good evening to your listeners. Great to have you. Um, Mr. Brantier, so, sorry, I may have lost Mr. Brantier there. I'll try and get him back uh, onto the telephone line right now. Um, Mr. George, so here we are, a few hours to the deadline. I know you have been monitoring this. Um, I wonder what your information is about where we stand tonight with registrations. Of course, the voices we, we've just heard uh, provided some form of evidence, but it, the deadline is going to happen, right? The minister has said clearly this is no backing down now. What's your take on where we are tonight with what has happened over the last one month? Well, Evans, let me state without equivocation that the minister will have to eat the humble pie. The minister will have to realize that she serves the people of this republic and that the people of this republic are not her subjects. It broke my heart to hear a Ghanaian have to board a plane from wherever he was outside the country to come to Ghana to because the minister is simply inefficient and incompetent. She's registering SIM cards. She's put a deadline. She knows that there are Ghanaians who are serving their country in missions outside this country. The Ghanaians who are resident outside this country and she has not given them an opportunity to register their SIM cards or any opportunity, any available portal to register their SIM cards. Because if you use an iOS device, you can't use that self-service app. If you use an Android device, the app itself is unable to handle the traffic. You have a minister who set a deadline without looking at the, 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 the robustness of the platform she's using to do the registration, which is what you're hearing again from the Vox Pops that you played. People, the network operators complain of network challenges. Those network challenges are not the telcos networks. It's the third party application that the minister is assisting is used to do the registration. Again, you have a minister who set a deadline without any recourse to persons living with disability in Ghana 
who have no fingerprints and so cannot be registered using fingerprints. She says she's going to disconnect their line. I mean, if you have a minister who is so technically bereft of competence to execute a simple policy initiative like a SIM registration, you have this mess. And I know for, for certain, the technical people at her disposal are making it clear to her that her position is recalcitrant, it is untenable, and is inimical to the growth of the sector. Evans, take my word, 1st of October will come. The SIM cards will still be active because it cannot, you, you, you cannot just block the SIM cards that way. And you know, most interesting, I'm, I'm, as, as you're aware, I'm outside the country, but as soon as I get back, I'm going to be doing a national call for individuals who have registered for the Ghana card. And let me use your platform to even start that call. Anybody who's registered for the Ghana card and has not been given the Ghana card yet and has been given a later date, please let me have your data. Finish my office with your data. Because, even we filed a suit on Monday with nine Ghanaian citizens who have registered, some who have registered for the Ghana card since 2018 but have not received the Ghana card. Do you believe that as soon as we've made public the rates with their names between yesterday and today the nia has called those individuals given them a vip treatment and handed over their ghana cards to them oh so that so explains the story that we saw that nine individuals who went to court have withdrawn the case no 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 that, that the case is still active you see what happened was on Friday, the lawyers filed the case without a commissioning of the case. And so there was an error in that. And, and, and so we redrew that case and we filed again on Monday. And that case will be heard on the 6th. So we haven't redrawn the case. Whether the NIA provides their cards to them with, uh, on a gold, 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 set, uh, a silver, gold platter, we will still proceed with the court, court case because based on the NIA's inability to give them those cards, those people suffered some harm and damage when the minister illegally blocked their SIM cards earlier this month. But Mr. John, what, what, what you say, case. what you say, it raises questions. So these individuals have registered with the um, yes. NIA, have not received their yes. cards some, you know, up to two years. Immediately yes. their names went up as, you know, applicants in the case. They are called within a few days and issue the cards. Within 48 hours, they were called by the NIA, begged to come for their cards. They got to the NIA office, and the information we've received from them, they were giving VIP treatments. There was an NIA officer waiting to meet them at the entrance, walked them straight into an air-conditioned room, offered them water, and then gave them their Ghana cards. These are people who for two and a half years had been chasing the NIA, had been tossed left and right. Some of them came from outside Accra had to go to Elwak, had to go to Shashi with no success in two and a half years. As soon as we support them to file a court case, the NIA has called them and begged them and handed over their cards to them. So if that is how the system will work, every Ghanaian who has applied for a Ghana card and has not received your Ghana card, please let us have your name. We will add it to the class action suit you are working on with Selon Branty and Iman of Imani, and we would file those cases within the next week and ensure that all those people also get a VIP treatment. No Ghanaian must be maltreated or lose their SIM card because of the inefficiencies and incompetence of people holding public office. Sam, stay with me. Uh, Mr. Branty, well, first of all, before I even come to your substantive matter of the signatures, what, what do you say about what Sam George just revealed? No, I fully concur 110% with what uh, Sam George has said so far. Um, we cannot live in a country where uh, a minister can use a state uh, agency or a, a, what do you call it, a sector regulator as a linchpin to inflict pain and suffering on the people of Ghana. It is very, very shocking and sad that over the past one month that all of this has happened, the only statement we have heard from her officially was that horrible Facebook statement she made, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, about a month ago, uh, saying that people's negligence, uh, the people are to blame for their own negligence. Forgetting that this is a cross-sectoral matter which has a lot of factors beyond her control and beyond her ambit and beyond even what her, the capacity of her, her organization, uh, which is the ministry, can do. So um, to the extent that you are using uh, the regulator as a tool to to push whatever agenda you wish to push, it is very, very um, pathetic and it's actually 
um, a bit, I should, I should use the word, insulting to the average Ghanaian who has had to go through all these inconveniences, all these, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, hurdles, just to be able to do something that is out of their reach. Um, this is the 21st century. Ghanaians should never take pride in queuing for anything to the extent of queuing to the point where they are frustrated. Uh, that even is an indication of gross inefficiency, um, a lack of self-awareness or a lack of awareness of where we are as a country. And this is a mark of poor leadership. For every minute that people are standing in those queues, they are losing the chance to continue with whatever provides them livelihood. The nation is losing in terms of the revenue that could have come from the productivity of all of these uh, able-bodied men and women uh, who have had to stop whatever they are doing to come here. And you see, we should note that these are not just a bunch of um, touts or unemployed people or useless people. There are mothers, there are fathers, there are... Yeah, I mean, we, we had stories there, of people who said they, that the challenge with, with coming is because they had to leave their uh, daily bread, so to speak. But, but Mr. Brantia, exactly. Mr. Brantia there, there's one group of legitimate uh, people who, like um, Sam George had said, they had registered. No fault of this have not been issued with their Ghana cards. I mean, there's that group. But then there's another group of people who have simply refused to register. And we see that each time the deadline is extended, they, they, the queues reduce. Approaching the, the deadline, then the queues begin to form again. Certainly, Mr. Brantier, you agree with the minister that certainly that, that group of that second group of people, they deserve to be blocked. Their seems deserve to be blocked. Why do their things deserve to be blocked? Were their things not activated by a biometric uh, source of identification? But as a country, we've taken, we've we've come to a, a, a conclusion, and we've adopted a policy that says now we want to re-register Sims. We've given you a year's uh, grace period to do this. Definitely, if, we must get to a point Evans, and encourage people to go and clearest, do it. Yeah, even the clearest evidence of an inefficient system. It's a system where it does not engage the people to be motivated enough to participate in the process. And this is one of those. Of all the methods that could have been used, um, like we have said so many times before, Ivan, uh, people with SNIT information, people with NHID information, have merged their information with the NIA database successfully without a single person having to take yeah, yeah, make even a phone call. In fact, they rather receive text messages confirming the merging of their data. What has stopped the minister and the NCA from using the same seamless, efficient, cost-free approach, which has very little attrition with any ongoing processes? It is basically because she has decided to be recalcitrant and choose the most of all the, the of in the, in the whole uh, gamut. Of, of, of processes that were available, the most inefficient, the most human intensive, the most uh, uh, resource intensive, and the worst way possible to handle this. And sadly, like I always keep saying, even this registration that we are doing, the biometric data or the so-called biometric data that has been captured cannot even be verified with the NIA database anyway. So we are not even moving a step forward. We are actually moving three steps back. Because now we have questions with the kind of data integrity that we are building up. Yeah, Mr. Brantia, this is the way to run a nation. As a minister in charge of digitalization, you choose the worst and most inefficient backward route to handle a service that is crucial to this national, uh, this nation's, uh, what do you call it, security and uh, digital setup. Yeah. And you take pride in it so much that you think that you can impose a deadline on top of it. But Mr. Branta, I know, I know you collect the signatures. What happens now? Yeah. Because you have a few hours now to that deadline to kick in. I am entreating everybody. And um, you know, you, you have the link on, 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 on my uh, Facebook page. If you are making the new story on this, you can add the link so that anybody who feels aggrieved or anybody who knows that this deadline is going to affect them through no fault of theirs should join in because, like Sam George said earlier, we are going to file a bunch of suits and categorize them according to the exact grievance to target certain exact remedies that we want to have. When, when do you hope because to do this? We are going to do this over the course of the week. 
we are just waiting to see uh, how things will progress. How, how many signatures you have? How many signatures you have now? We have around two thousand signatures already. But if anybody feels, or any of the any of your listeners currently feel that this situation is going to aggravate them, they are encouraged to join because we have to ensure that there's accountability. We cannot let people ride us uh, uh, ragged onto the ground just because they feel like it is their prerogative to do so. Mm. I, I'm grateful, Salon Brandt here. I mean, Mr. George, so the telcos, the minister has said 30th of September, well, effectively in the next few hours, sims that have not been re-registered, they should lose all their services. Question is, should the telcos simply do this in the next few hours as directed and being enforced by the NCA? Should they switch off your SIM completely in the next few hours? What should the telcos do? Again, I will use your platform to serve notice to the telcos that they are criminally liable if they proceed with the illegal directive from the minister and the regulator. They have a contract with their clients and that is why we are suing them as, as, as we'll be attaching them to the suits for those who have sued already because they listened. The telcos must know that they are multinationals. And yes, they operate in Ghana under the laws of Ghana, but they have a responsibility to positively defy illegality. If they continue to assist the regulator and the minister, in the exercise of this illegality, because they are afraid that the minister will impose fines on them, they should choose which fines they will pay. Damages in court for thousands of Ghanaian citizens, and we will chase them and make sure they recompense our citizens, or they stand with the citizens of Ghana and say to the minister and the regulator, you are wrong. We would actually side with our customers because the telcos can the telcos have gone to court. Let me give you an example. MTN went to court when the minister asked that all telcos should release during COVID. The minister, for whatever strange reason, requested that the telcos should release all financial details of citizens to the regulator. Vodafone complied. Airtel Tigo complied. MTN refused and went to court. MTN won the case. And you see, Evans, as we speak, just this morning, Australia is dealing with its biggest data leak. Over 12 million citizens in Australia have been affected because a telecom company messed up their data, their data services. And so their financial details, their medical records have been made available. You are using our telcos today are using a system that they themselves have queried. They themselves have raised technical issues. The telcos have made a point to the regulator that if they were asked to do this registration on their own, they won't use the platform that the regulator is asking them to use because there are technical challenges. Yet they are going ahead as a conduit for the collection of our data. They should bear in mind that we will hold them criminally liable and they cannot escape because they will say a regulator asked them to do it. They have responsibilities to their customers. And so they should choose which of them, where they want to stand. Mm. With a regulator that is overbearing and a minister that is acting illegally or with the people of Ghana and the laws of Ghana. Sam George, thank you very much. He's a deputy ranking on the uh, Communications Committee. Where are you tonight? Are you in a queue attempting to register before the deadline strikes in a few hours? Let me hear from you here on Newsnight 055 Newsnight starts now.